we're here today to launch what we hope will be the biggest public health debate that the North East has ever seen. It's the North East Big Drink debate so that we can understand uh, people's relationship with alcohol, uh, how much they drink, where they drink, where they buy their drink, why they drink, so we can understand that relationship so that we can begin to persuade them just to drink a little bit less, not to give it up altogether. They can still go out and have fun, but the problem is that people are drinking too much and it's leading to health problems. In the North East, we have the highest alcohol-related hospital admissions in the country, and that's not something to be proud of, and we need to change that. Because a lot of the time with alcohol, people just think it's like 17, 18-year-olds going out to the big market. Whereas, uh, in actual fact, it's sometimes people who are just sat at home having two glasses, three glasses a night and not understanding that a bottle of wine has 10 units. So um, I think you've got to really tell people that it is even doing that can really affect you. Know, if you're, if you know, you have a pint after work or whatever, is that is that good? And now they do add up for the, the week intake and whatnot. So yeah, it's just one of them, isn't it? You've got to think about it. That's what it's all about. We really need to engage people uh, to help them, to help us understand why they drink, but also to get them to consider themselves why they drink and how much they drink. Um, because quite often, once you start counting how much you're drinking, it, it provides a bit of a shock. You know, and, it, and it's all kinds of people that we want to engage, drinkers and non-drinkers, because it affects everybody, uh, young and old, um, you know, it, because... It, it, Everybody points to the problems on the street with young people, and that's just dangerous because many of us, uh, you know, go home after work after a stressful day of work and have a glass or two of beer or wine or maybe more than that. And we're at much as much at risk from alcohol as as the as the kids that go out on a Friday and Saturday night. So. You know, everybody needs to take part in this debate because, you know, we can still have a good time, still be a fun area, uh, still have some great nights out in our cities, but we just need to consider how much we're drinking. Well, I do believe that the problem is worse um, for, for a number of reasons. One, I think it's the availability of alcohol. You know, if you go back 30 years, you used to have to go to a public house or an off-license. Now alcohol is freely available everywhere. I think the culture towards alcohol has changed. You know, and whereas it was sort of a lubricant towards a decent night out, a lot of people now go out with a distinct sort of objective of getting drunk. You know, so there's been a real sort of sea change. We need to try and turn the clock back a little bit, to be honest. Unfortunately, alcohol consumption has been rising and uh, it's gone up 69% since 1980 and the amount of alcohol harm has gone up by the same extent. So now we're seeing very many more patients that, are, uh, uh, that have organ damage as a result of alcohol and uh, not only that, not only is the number, but it's also the age of the patients because people are drinking at a much younger age and in much higher quantities now at a younger age than they did in the past. So 40% of the patients that we see now in the hospital with terminal liver disease uh, uh, are under the age of 40. And uh, this is a very, very serious situation and we've got to have do something about it. I've worked in bars since I was 18 years old and through working in bars I became, you know, I know all the different types of spirits and it's probably not a spirit around that I don't like. So I was a little bit uneducated in alcohol when I first started to drink, I was only 18 and through then I've just moved from bar to bar, drinking alcohol and I got really ill. I, um, my parents noticed I'd lost so much weight and within six weeks I'd lost three stone. Um, I went to the doctors, got checked out, and they said it was some type of water infection, so I got tablets. And that removed some of the symptoms, but I was still really, really ill. So I, did, I got rushed in the hospital, stayed overnight, and they did some tests, and they said that um, I'd got a parasite inside my body. And this parasite seen my liver has been so, so weak because all the spirits have weakened it a lot. So it attached itself to the liver and grew an abscess. They said the abscess was about that long, about that wide. So I had to go through um, 
it was ready to burst. I had about another two weeks left. If I had a burst, it would have uh, released all the poisons into the blood and things like that. So they said I would have probably died from that. It has a massive impact. I mean, I've been a police officer for 30 years. I've seen it firsthand, the devastation alcohol can bring. I know illicit drugs features quite, quite heavily in, in people's thoughts and this sort of thing, but alcohol has got a massive effect right across the spectrum of crime, from homicide to the serious violence, domestic abuse, and also antisocial behaviour as well. And let's not forget, we also need to think about the victims of crime, you know, because alcohol has an impact on them as well in terms of, you know, sometimes you have, have victims under the influence in terms of subject of sexual assault, in terms of assault themselves, you know, there's lots of issues around alcohol and it's massive as far as I'm concerned. I have just once or twice been in the town and I wouldn't like to come back at night time in the town when they're, when they're walking around. No. They're, they're stupid some of them, aren't they really, you know? I don't think they do realise exactly how, imp how alcohol impacts upon them. And I, again, I've seen it firsthand people being arrested who, who were sort of fighting, the snarling, the spitting at police officers, you know, terrible language. And the next morning, when you sort of see them coming out of the cell and they're sober, they're absolutely horrified at what they've done. And they're quite nice people. So what we always say is, you know, alcohol can criminalise ordinary people. And there's many, many examples of that. Yes, yes, because I have been at the hospital with my husband at times at night when he's been poorly, and you see them coming in roaring drunk, you know, and, Money could be spent and they're really abusive things, to the people that. who are trying to help the them, staff. which is all wrong. I mean, there's people having to sell their homes because they have cancer. Yeah. You know, they, have, yeah. they can't afford the prescription, and yet they've got to cater for these. That I've got no sympathy when I see them rolling around. I think it's horrible. Yeah. just that I'm a little bit scared of, to drink, to tell you the truth. Um, in a week now, I will probably have two cocktails and one bottle of lager. Not much at all. It was a uh, straight um, whiskey, no ice, no mixer, just in a glass. But I would have a pint of lager at the same time as well. I hope my mum doesn't hear this. <laughs> She'll kill me. And then, do you, do you still come to a working in bars and working? Yeah, I love it. I love doing it, but it's a it's a good way to control people drinking habits because you get all the eighteen year olds now coming to the bar and you can get treble vodkas so so cheap now. Two pounds for a treble vodka mixer, and all the young students don't realise what that. They won't see any symptoms yet. Like I didn't, but they'll see when they get to 25. Oh my God, I wish I didn't do that when I was younger. But it's hard, it's hard. To, people would tell me, my mother would tell me, my dad, you drink too much. I'm like, no, no, it's all right. It's what everybody does this. And no, everybody doesn't do it. It's very, very important because it improves, it'll increase public awareness of alcohol the part that alcohol is playing in people's lives. Now one of the things that we often do when we see patients that we think are drinking too much is we ask them to write down how much they're drinking. And this is exactly what the big drink debate is doing. It's asking them very pertinent questions about their own relationship with alcohol. It's making them think about alcohol and how they, how, what they're doing in relation to it. And this is a very, very, this is therapeutic in its own right. And it'll also give us an enormous amount of information so to feed back to the public and tell us, to tell them about the amount of harm they're going to do. Well, we, we will be developing sort of a report which will look at alcohol and how much we're drinking and why we're drinking it, and that will help inform um, what, you know, how we try and persuade people to change that relationship with alcohol, how we try and persuade them to drink less, how we target the, our alcohol services so that we, we ensure that people's health, health is protected, how we engage people to start saying, you know, there's a different way that you can uh, have a relationship with alcohol, you can still have fun, but you don't need to be drunk.